Hello Dodo crew and welcome back to another video on Ark Survival Ascendant. Today I'm going to show you 20 tricks to improve your base. If you're playing PvP, I'll be starting off with some basic tricks and gradually getting to more advanced stuff later in the video. Grab a bottle of water and let's get straight into it. The single best way to use the space in your base as efficiently as possible is to have walkable storage and crafting areas. This approach doubles the crafting benches you can place and makes accessing your important items even easier. You can find countless tutorials on YouTube showing you how to build walkable storage and crafting benches. However, the easiest method is to place quarter walls in each quarter and then fill them with your crafting benches. Add some ramps to the quarters and you're good to go. You can also use quarters to create walkable storage areas on top of dedicated storages. If you want walkable walls, you can apply the same method, but use normal walls instead. You can even combine these two techniques to build something like an efficient ammo crafting station. The clock phase is incredible and every crafting area should have one. After placing it, it needs 7 hours to fully charge. Once charged, you can activate it and it will double the crafting speed of all your crafting benches in that area. This means you can craft twice the amount of ARBs and electronics if you wait for it to charge and then craft everything at once. After one hour of use, it goes into hibernation and you'll need to wait 7 more hours before you can use it again. It is easy to blow a generator, but it is hard to blow a vault. If you place a generator, Fill it with as much gasoline as you can and then drop a vault on top of it, so no one can blow your generator. Simply place your generator on the ground. Do not place it on top of a foundation. Place one fetch foundation close to it and build two fetch walls high. Then place one fetch ceiling in a way it is hanging over your generator. Place the vault onto that ceiling in a way it is right above the generator. Then pull out a sword or a pike and hit down one of the walls. As soon as the structure breaks, your vault will drop on top of the generator and no one ever will be able to blow or access it. Turret walls are terrible. Why you ask? Actually, it's not the turrets themselves that are the problem. The turrets are fine. It's the wall that's the issue. The problem with turret walls is that the wall can easily be destroyed by cannons or taken down by tech gear. It's tedious, but eventually someone will do it. Placing turrets without walls and using the terrain is a much better option, as turrets are far harder to hit with a cannon and can't be easily taken down with tech. If you're building in a cave, place ceiling mounted turrets and wall turrets. Just add some railings so that no one can run past them and you'll be set. Attackers will have to soak the damage instead of running directly into them. That actually doesn't mean you shouldn't build any walls at all. Large turret walls look intimidating and scare off most of your enemies. Add some bait boxes to your turret walls. When people are raiding with cannons, they will always aim for the generators first. Just place some random one by one metal cubes in a way that makes them look like they contain the generator. Position them so they are hidden enough to seem like real generator boxes, but obvious enough that they don't look too fake. For instance, placing three boxes behind the turret wall, one on each side and one in the middle, can make it difficult for raiders to find the real one. Building in caves will make you a prime target for all of your raiders. 6x damage makes you vulnerable to rockets and gives raiders a significant advantage during a raid. While most structures can withstand 1 or 2 rockets at regular damage, a single rocket in a 6x damage zone can be devastating, potentially dropping all of your turrets at once. Instead, build in red holes. They don't have 6x damage and some of them are incredibly strong and nearly unraidable. Examples include the red holes with entrances that are in the ceiling, crouch red holes and overworld red holes on aberration. These locations are difficult to raid and even the strongest attackers will struggle to take you down. If you are playing on aberration, avoid building too close to plan Z as raiders will be able to heal their tames there without any trouble. Tech turrets should be your primary defense as they deal the highest amount of damage, do extra damage to rock golems, knock enemies off their stegos and knock back terror bird runners. Heavy turrets are the ideal complement to tech turrets as they are essential for destroying rockets. Place tech turrets and heavy turrets in a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning 2 tech turrets for each heavy turret. Tesla coils and Plant X surface support turrets. They slow down enemies, apply damage over time and increase the overall damage dealt by your other turrets. If someone still tries to tank your turrets, 
be prepared with creatures like Dinos, Tulas, Pyromanes, Wyvern, Perisauruses, and other Dinos. Their various abilities, like the bleed effect from Tulas, can help to take down Stegos easily, or you can use Wyvern to simply carry away your attackers. Okay, I don't know if I like this strategy, as it feels pay to win for me, but it's the new meta. So I have to use it and I'll show it to you. With the linked storage box, you can now teleport across the map instantly and carry large amounts of items with you. This means you can set up a farming base in a resource rich area, gather everything you need and transport it back to your main base without having to defeat a single boss. Simply place two linked storage boxes, one in your base and one at your farming spot. Bring along some beds and a vault. Now farm everything you need and store it in the vault transfer all the items into the linked storage box, then teleport back to your base using a bed and take the items out of the linked storage box. You've now transported a large amount of resources without needing a teleporter. It feels pay to win because you need the new DLC to get the storage box and I really don't like that part, but this is now the easiest way to transfer huge amounts of resources instantly. I'm Team Waltz and I make sure to keep my tribe's base as clean as possible. That's why everything in our base is color coded. Each tribe member has a personal color for their own storages and we have a designated color for shared storages. Vaults are labeled, fridges are clearly marked with what's inside and everything has its place. Keeping a clean and organized base helps you to find what you need even during tense situations like raids or defenses. It lets you focus on the important tasks instead of wasting time searching for cluster grenades and 10 different vaults. Are you team smithy or team vaults? Let me know in the comments. Naming your stuff is the most basic concept of organization in your base. Name your storages after what's inside or even better, place a sign or a picture of it onto that storage. As soon as you get a teleporter, you need to set up internal turrets. There's nothing worse than logging in and discovering that a new patch has set your teleporter to public, allowing enemies to port in and destroy everything you have. Place two to three turrets right where your teleporter is, so that no enemy can exploit that bug against you. The weakest part of your base is your roof. That's why you have to guard it with everything you can. Don't let enemies land on your base. As soon as they're standing on your roof, you risk losing everything you've built so far. Find a spot where enemies cannot raid you from above. If you can't find such a location, you need to come up with a way to get them off your roof as soon as possible. Build an umbrella or some other protective structure, but do not let enemies access your roof. Having the high ground is key. You need to find a pillar or some cliff on which you can build your base. Enemies will have to find a way to get up to you and this makes them vulnerable while raiding you. Most of the time they will have to build some fancy stuff or use flyers. Either ways opens up a lot of possibilities on how you can defend your base. If you don't know what to build since aberration, you can always build a cliff and it will always be a pain to raid. Walls can be blown, but mesh cannot. The more natural walls you have, the less you need to craft and defending against mesh is unnecessary. So find a spot with as much mesh around your base as possible. The environment is key. And yes, living in the swamp cave does not necessarily make a lot of fun. Being underwater all of the time does not help and the radiation zone is probably the worst place to build. However, the worse the spot is for you, the worse it is for your enemies. No one wants to raid a fully built swamp cave and raiding in a hazard suit or scuba gear isn't enjoyable either. If you can build in an area like this, you have the best chance of staying for a long time because no one wants to raid those spots. When it comes to your base, I say fake it till you make it. A base that has turrets on it always looks intimidating and most players will not even dare to check if there is ammunition in the turrets even if you only have a few hundred shots. Place your turrets and make your base look dangerous. The scarier your base looks the fewer players will actually try to test your turrets. This is my base and when I build it I mentally raid myself. In my head 
I constantly ask the following three questions over and over again. Where would I build a FOB against me? Where do I need to play spam so that enemies cannot simply build a FOB? Can I manipulate my enemies by preparing areas in a way that they build in a specific location? If they do, can I prepare some dinos and gear behind them to turn the tables and attack? Where would I attack my base? Where are the weak spots? Every base has weak spots. Can I build in a way that forces my enemies to attack a certain part of my base? And how can I defend against that? How would I attack it? What strategy would I use? Would I soak or run the base? Would I raid it online or offline? And so on. What I mean is that if you try to attack me, I've already played out every scenario in my head and raided my base in the same way over and over again so that you cannot raid me in a way I didn't already play through in my head. When it comes to raiding, no one has raided my base as many times as I have. When it comes to building, I am my biggest enemy and you should be yours. Yet, even if you have raided yourself and done everything you can, you will still get raided by someone else. That's fine. As long as you have some backup somewhere else, have multiple bases equipped with at least the basic crafting stations and some blueprints so that if you get raided, you can start over again and kickstart your next arc. Having one wall is one thing, but building your base in a way that creates multiple barriers between your loot and the enemies is even better. Make raiding your pain, make it expensive and ensure it looks like the hardest raid your enemies will ever have. As long as you're not the alpha and you're not claiming a cave with hundreds of turrets, if someone finds you, move on or at least claim another spot and build up. If you cannot defend it, it is best to stay hidden, move your stuff and save as much as possible. Do not try to fight for a lost cause. If you're a small tribe, you simply cannot fight 1 vs 4, you're not Kishko, Sharks or Bam. They could handle that situation, but you and I will probably lose 9 out of 10 fights. Losing and dropping out of a wipe is way worse than running and staying in the game. Enjoy the game. Honestly, even if I lost stuff, I never felt like I lost much. Every time I built a base and I got destroyed, I learned some valuable lessons. Learning is part of the game and every defeat is an opportunity for you to grow. So you can't really lose in this game as long as you don't give up. I hope you liked this video and I'm thrilled to read if this video has helped you. Hit the like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and consider subbing to the channel. Alright, Frodo.